few months ago, I posted this montage of me building this fully adjustable weight bench. Now, I'm going to give you the full tutorial of how to actually build this weight bench. So, check out the bench and let's get right into it. Important disclaimer, what you see in this video displays some unsafe and dangerous behavior and employment of power tools. So please take precautions and safety and consult a professional when proceeding. Proceed at your own risk. Here's a material list. This is all the hardware, all the nuts, bolts, washers, and whatnot. And this kind of changes based on what I learned when actually building the bench. But this is actually what I use. So it's now this is a wood, so plywood, lumber, and then the cloth padding, etc. And I'll be posting the actual guide in the description. So the first part that we need to build is a frame. And I used it 4x4 and connected it at a 90 degree angle with a dovetail joint. Now I recommend putting an L bracket at the bottom to brace that together. So the first thing you want to do is measure and then make those cuts on those 4x4s. And all the measurements, of course, are in the guide that I will have a link below. Here are the feet from the leftover wood and I don't recommend using this design but you can check it out here. Step 3 was actually cutting out this uh, template which I used for the dovetail joint and this is to ensure that I have uh, nice uh, even lines. So here's a long leg which is going to have the female joint and this rests onto the male joint. And so that means that when you pull away, it doesn't fall apart. You can see how this comes together later on in the video. And here's me just, uh, I guess, cutting it out, carving it out, and uh, ensuring that my template fits. Next thing you need to do is cut the joint for the short leg. And this is done by cutting the outside instead of carving out the inside. So here's me carving that out. I used many different tools that would not be normally used for this type of uh, work. But uh, if you have a jig and a circular saw, you can make some nice clean cuts. Uh, here's me just kind of improvising since I do not know how to do this. Now here is a short leg going into the long leg. Uh, I just had to kind of put some force into it, kind of force it in there since it wasn't a clean cut. Moving forward, we want to make sure that uh, this thing sits straight. So we had to cut 30 degrees on one leg and 60 degrees on the other leg. Of course, these pictures will be included in the guide that will be linked below. Now that those angles have been cut off, uh, I'm doing just a little fit test here just to make sure that you know they're able to sit straight. I'm not actually going to put it in yet until I put glue between the joints. Here's just me carving out the foot, uh, carving the indent where uh, the leg will fit into it. Now I don't recommend this unless you have the proper tools like a jig that can cut these very neatly because uh, this was a lot, a lot of work and the foot didn't fit properly and just uh, it was a complete headache. So if you do have the tools, go for it. I did include uh, some of the measurements in the guide there. I actually created a little diagram with the short leg and the long leg cuts so you can have the measurements if you do decide to go this route and of course cut it properly. Marking on the leg is pretty simple. You just put the 4x4 against the leg, then just mark where that cut would be. Otherwise, I say do it a different way. Cut the foot in half and put it on the opposite sides of the leg. Put a threaded nut on one side and a threaded rod on the other side and then screw that through. So this is a threaded nut, you can just screw that inside, and then this is a threaded rod, you just need to find the right length for that. The next thing I did was uh, put some glue between the frame joints, put a clamp on it, and so this made it solid. 
The next step was to actually cut this piece off. And I do that over here by marking where I need to cut it. And you can find these measurements in the guide. So then I measured all around the whole triangle, made my lines so I would have a nice clean cut. I would need to flip this over because the circular saw was not big enough. So I'd have to flip it, make sure that my cuts were clean and straight. Now that the frame is built, we gotta put on the arms and this is kind of what it's gonna look like. And so all the measurements, of course, are in the guide. You can check that out. So for the bars, I cut both of that out of this uh, two by four. I believe I used uh, two two by fours to get all the four pieces for the bars for the backrest and the seat rest. Next I took one 2x4 and cut it in half right through. This is for the seat adjustment arms. Uh, then cut plywood to create the backrest and the seat. After making the markings on both the 2x4s and the frame, I drilled holes, pallet holes through them, and then I moved on to creating the wider holes so that it would fit. And this is kind of just aligning those on the other two by four. So I don't have to cut, you know, make all these markings. And these are the seat adjustment arms, kind of did the same thing here. I started with a small bit, then moved to a bigger bit to fit those uh, bolts. Now I'm just doing a little fit test here. And the next thing I needed to do was find out where the angles were gonna be. So I, I use a protractor and a level to kind of figure out what angles this backrest would be at. And all of this is included in the guide. So check that out. I already have the measurements in there. After making those markings, I already knew the uh, distance from the screw hole to the top of the bracket. So the measurement I gave you is at the top of the bracket. So you just need to align your bracket and uh, make your screw holes accordingly. Next, I aligned the backrest and the seat rest to figure out where the holes would go. You know, looked at how long the bars were and then made the holes accordingly. You may notice that the backrest is all the way at the end of the bars, which is to articulate the backrest all the way over and all the way down, flush negative 30 degrees as well as 90 degrees. I got these drawer slides uh, lying around, but I recommend some nice sturdy drawer slides with ball bearings. Take it apart, make those markings, and then attach them on. So this is what it looks like so far with the frame. Then I went ahead and countersunk some of those holes because the bolts ended up being a bit too short. Then I went ahead and sanded all the pieces of wood, plywood, and the frame. Here you can see a little bit more of that struggle that I had with the feet. I had to keep going and adjusting uh, to make sure that it fits together. Then I went ahead and hammered that together to make it fit. Doing the same thing on the other side for the short leg, I ran into some problems. As you can see here, I just wouldn't fit properly. So I believe I took too much off one side or not enough on the other one. It just was not worth the struggle. Next is going to be assembly and putting on the back and seat rests. So here I'm putting in these brackets. These are what I had on hand. 
I recommend using wider brackets or two brackets side by side. Uh, and I did include the measurements and the type of brackets I recommend in the guide as well as the picture you're going to see next. Here it is. So now I'm just assembling this. Uh, want to make sure you put washers and then maybe a nut between the arm bar and the frame to give it a little bit more space and uh, stability. So this is kind of what it looks like after putting those washers and nuts. And you got the uh, washer on the outside as well. Here I am putting all the nuts in and assembling the, the rest of the frame together. Here you can see that uh, it's countersunk coal. And on the other side, this is what, look, what it looks like. This is for the adjustment arm. Finally, I'm just gluing in this uh, short leg. Next, I went around and taped the plywood so that there's no splinters or any sharp edges. So for the foot, I even tried putting a lag bolt in there to uh, give it some extra stability, but that thing was just not going in properly. And so I ended up sticking with the glue. As you can see, I'm just gonna put that lag bolt in and then take it right back out and then put some more glue in there. I also added these screws at the bottom of the bar so the backrest would not slide all the way out. Finally, we're putting the uh, padding on and I'm just testing it out, see how much padding I need and cutting that out. After that, I just tape it down so it stays in place. Then I got a large cloth curtain and then cut that to the right size. I tried to use a staple gun, but I had no staples, so I ended up using some uh, fabric uh, spray to glue it on. And here's the final results. I really hope this guide helped and that you liked this bench. Uh, if you do make one of your own, please send me pictures and a video. I would love to see it. Thank you.